everyone, I'm Shay Hess and this is Hungry in Brooklyn. Have you ever had a barbecue and spent more time slaving over the hot coals than with your guests? Well, I have a solution for you that requires little effort for lots of flavor. On this episode, we learn everything we need to know about pork shoulder, also known as pork butt. We'll hit up the experts, then create a recipe for pulled pork easy enough for any home cook. First stop, the Meat Hook in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where butcher Sarah Bigelow has a passion for pork. Let's see what she has to say about finding the best butt. So I'm interested in getting a pork shoulder because I want to make whole pork. Right. So it, does that come from this? It does. Okay. Um, it comes from this. You're obviously not going to deal with the whole thing. Right. That would this be won't fit in my oven. Totally not manageable. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to take off the trotter and the shank. We will break it down for you into a picnic shoulder and pork butt. Why do they call it right. pork butt? <laughs> um, they actually call it butt because uh, butt used to mean the widest part of something. Okay. So this is actually the widest part of the animal. The shoulder is right up here. Let's say I want to serve 10 people. Okay. What's the ratio of pound per person? Um, generally a, a third of a pound um, is usually a, a good amount. Should I cook this bone in or should I cook it bone out? I would definitely recommend having it bone in as with anything else. Um, that you're cooking, having the bones in really does contribute to the flavor and also the moisture. Why is it important to buy your pork shoulder or any of your meat at a place like the Meat Hub? Well, for us, what we find really important is supporting local farms. So the farms we work with, we've worked with for a while. We have a good relationship with the farmers, we have a good relationship with the slaughterhouse, and we know that this pig was well cared for. Um, and it continues to be well cared for. That's another thing that we really take a lot of pride in. But also, that it just tastes better. It really does. Any animal that's able to actually go out, run around, um, and in the pig's case, forage, which is what they're meant to do, is going to taste significantly better. It's going to really show in its flavor and in its meat that it's been well cared for. It's a happier pig. It's a definitely a happier pig. Yeah. Now that we're in possession of our happy hog, let's head over to local barbecue joint Feta Sao, where owner Joe Carroll fills us in on how to get the best barbecue flavor at home. You can mimic barbecue in an oven probably the easiest by slow roasting, and we cook it at 220 degrees, which is a very low temperature. It's gonna take you upwards of eight hours because the idea is uh, that slow cooking is what's breaking down all the connective tissue and the collagen and the fat in, in that particular cut. And if you cook it too fast and too high, you won't break it down. You, you'll get cooked meat, finished meat at, at the right temperature, but, it but it'll be, be tough and chewy and it won't be as unctuous and it won't, you know, won't have that, that, that sort of uh, sexiness that barbecue has, you know? Sexiness. Exactly. Sexy barbecue. Well, it's like, you know, <laughs> fat, you know? It's that, that when you eat barbecue or braised meats or, or slow cooked meats and you get that kind of sticky, fatty kind of thing, that's, that's what it's all about, you know? What should I do for flavor? Uh, we cook here with a dry rub. We like the kind of crusty bark that develops from not having anything wet touch it. I would say that the three biggest ingredients in our rub is uh, salt, brown sugar, and espresso roast coffee. That kind of almost burnt roasty, bitter coffee flavor against the, the really sweet brown sugar flavor is really what makes it special. This is some of your beautiful pulled pork right here. It's shredded. Right. It looks delicious. <laughs> it tastes <Yes>. delicious. <laughs> So how do I get it to this consistency? Uh, remove the bone. Okay. And then you just get in there with your hands, start pulling it apart. You're gonna uh, want to remove big hunks of fat that are nothing but grizzly fat. Right. Um, but little bits of fat are totally, you know, okay. And you know, you want that meat to stay moist, and the fat's gonna help do that. And the fat's gonna carry a lot of flavor too. Thanks for all the info, Joe. Let's go home and get started on our slow roasted pulled pork. It's about time for me to hit the hay, but first I have a job to do. You see, I have friends coming over for a barbecue tomorrow and I'll actually get to hang out with them because my pulled pork is gonna be done ahead of time. How, you ask? Because the pork is gonna hang out in the oven all night while I get my beauty rest. Our first step is to get started on the dry rub. We're gonna take Joe's suggestion and do a coffee and brown sugar based dry rub, but the main ingredient is still the salt. I have a quarter cup of salt here, and to that I'm going to add three tablespoons of espresso ground coffee, three tablespoons of dark brown sugar, two tablespoons of freshly ground pepper, one and a half tablespoons of cumin, one and a half tablespoons of granulated garlic, and last but not least, a tablespoon of paprika. Whisk that all together. We're gonna get our hands dirty in a second anyway. So if your sugar clumps a little bit, just get in there with your hands and break it up. Wouldn't be called a rub if you weren't meant to touch it. So this is the eight pound roast that we got at the meat hook. And we are going to cover all sides with the rub, but first I have a little trick. I've roasted garlic here. I just cut off the top, 
300 degrees in the oven for about an hour and a half with a little bit of olive oil covered tightly. And afterwards, you get this gooey, delicious garlic. It just squeezes right out. And we're gonna use that as a paste so that the dry rub adheres. Just go ahead and massage that all over. All right, and now for the fun part, the dry rub. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And don't be scared if the pork shoulder comes out of the oven black. That's just the coffee and the brown sugar, and you want that crust. It tastes delicious. When you break into it, it's not gonna be black on the inside, I promise. So this is ready to pop in the oven, 10 hours at 220 degrees overnight. The only other thing you're gonna wanna do is take the lid off after about four hours. So set an alarm and just come out and pop that lid off and you'll have delicious pulled pork. All right, it's time for me to head to bed. So this is what the pork shoulder looks like after it's been roasted for 10 hours. The only thing I have left to do before my guests arrive is pull the pork. I'm adding just a little of the pan drippings to the pork to keep it nice and moist until my guests arrive. Now Joe said his favorite sauce is just cider vinegar, brown sugar, salt, and hot pepper heated together until everything dissolves. All right, let's take this outside. All right, guys. Pulled pork is served. You guys ready to dig in? So how's the pork? It's the sexiest. <laughs> well, I guess my job here is done. For more information and recipes from this episode, visit hungryinbrooklyn.com.